Father God, I thank you and I praise you, Lord God. First of all, for your love, for your compassion. I thank you, Lord God, that you are a God that watches over your children. And you have given us the authority, Lord God, to be victorious. And Father, we will walk in that authority that you have given us. For you have given man the dominion over this earth. And I thank you, Lord God, that that dominion, Lord God, expands, Lord God, to every demonic force. To every demonic force. Satan and his crew are bound. We thank you, Lord God, that you said in your word that all things, all things work to the good for them that are called by you and those that love you. So I thank you, Lord God, that even what we're going through now, as bad as it looks, it will work toward our good in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I'd like to thank you for joining in with us today. You know, it's really a blessing to have you a part of our service. I'd like to also thank you for your financial giving. You know, those of you that are supporting the ministry during this time, because we're in some challenging times right now. But I want to assure you that even though we're in challenging times, we will come out of this victorious as we walk through this moment in our lives and notice I said a moment because this won't last forever we will be out of this God will bring us through this and he will bring us through this victorious in the name of Jesus amen I'd like to bother I pray for the homes Lord God that they be divinely protected I plead the blood over their homes over their children over their grandchildren Lord God and I thank you Lord God Father as we set ourselves in agreement to pray for those that may be facing this coronavirus right now Lord God for the healing of their body Lord God Father I thank you Lord God that those that are in hospitals Lord God that they be rose up by you Lord God mm, in the name of Jesus those that are in quarantine Lord God they come out of quarantine Lord God healthy and moving in a place of divine health Father I lift up this service to you now in the name of Jesus also I'd like to let you know at the end of this service <clears throat> we will be having communion together so if you could get your elements, you know, sometime during the service, if you can get your elements together, and we'll do this together. We'll do communion together. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> I want you to turn in your Bibles to James chapter 1, verse 12. And what we want to look at today, we want to look at the fact that we are in a battle. You know, we are in a battle. And this is something that we must understand. It doesn't matter whether we have the coronavirus 19 or we're just living day to day, all right, without the coronavirus. We still face a battle every day as Christians. And we need to be prepared for the fight that we have. We need to have the mentality that we are always subject to a battle. So we stand our, we stand our ground and ready to punch back. Amen? Amen. James 1 and 12 says, Blessed is the man who preserves or perseveres, excuse me, blessed is the man who perseveres under trial because he has stood the test. He will receive the victor's crown, the life that God has promised him, who loves him. All right? Notice it says blessed. That word blessed means happy satisfied is the man or the woman who perseveres that means who continues on that means the person that endures that means the person that will keep on keeping on you know in the midst of trials and testings that person that will trust God in the midst of that it is that person that the Bible says mm, that he will receive the victor's crown okay and he will also receive the life that God has promised him. Oh yes. Praise God. See, engaging in battle, you know, means that we have some spiritual tools that's been given to us. Those spiritual tools that have been given to us to fight this battle, they are also the same one Jesus used. 
So what am I saying to you? I'm saying that, hey, look, what Jesus used, we also have that same right to use those. But we must use them. We must use them. You know, this is a time that we must stay fully clothed in our armor. This is a time we must stay fully prayerful. This is a time that we need to do all the things that we've been taught. Basically, uh, what I'm saying to you, for most of us, school is out, okay? We got to do what we've learned to do. Not talk about it. We got to be about it. Amen? Amen. You know, no one encounters a fight because no one likes conflict. <laughs> That's something that many of us attempt to avoid. But being a Christian follower of Jesus, you're going to have conflict. You're going to encounter moments where you're going to have to fight. Paul said it this way, fight the good fight of faith. Amen? What was Jesus' mission? What was his mission? Think about it. Why did Jesus come? You know, even at a young age, Jesus knew what his mission was. All right. He had a purpose. At a young age, Jesus knew that he must be about his father's business. That's found in Luke 2:49. All right. In the last days of his earthly ministry, Jesus, when he was headed toward Jerusalem, he knew he would be killed. Listen, he knew he would be killed. He knew this. And he knew the pain that he was going to go through because he was in a human body. All right, so he understood how this was going to be. But yet and still, because it was the Father's will and because he was going to win a complete victory for us, I'm gonna say that again, a complete victory for us. Because you understand when Jesus came, he was Jesus. When Jesus came, he was already victorious. But the reason he had to come in a human body is because he needed to win back for us, you and me, what the devil has stolen. That we can also walk in the victory that he has given us. I want you to understand as we go through this that you are victorious. That you are already a champion. But a lot of times life doesn't allow us to see ourselves as champions because of what we go through. Let's be real. Many of us have been through so much, have disappointments, letdowns, you know, betrayal. We've had so many things that you can become a person that doesn't feel that you're victorious. You can become a person that feels that life is just unfair. Look. We all have those moments, but we can't stay in those moments. We have to understand that what we have been given, it has been given to us to be victorious. Why? It's because the greater one lives in us. See, you have greatness in you. The Bible says, greater is he that lives in you and me than he that lives in this world. So you have greatness in you. You have to let that greatness flow out. You can't allow your mind and what you think and the situations and the circumstances around you to dictate how you live your life and who you are. What dictates how you live your life and who you are is what the word of God says. He says you are wonderfully made. Oh God. You know, when Jesus said it was finished, what did he mean? What he meant, what he had came for, his mission, what he was intending to do, the Father's will. He said that it is finished. He was, it was complete. Why was it complete? Because it was finished. It was over. And what he did, he transferred the power and the authority for us that are still remaining in this earthly realm he transferred that to us that we could be the way he was a lot of people say I can't be like Jesus I can't be like Jesus well you don't understand what God is giving you then if you say that you can't be like Jesus because you have the Holy Spirit in you you have the word of God before you you can because just as his disciples understand this 
when his disciples were walking with him, they were students. They were students learning, teaching. Jesus was teaching them. But when Jesus resurrected and went back to heaven, they were no longer students. Now they were teachers. There has to come a time in your life that you have to transfer from the student position. We always continue to learn. Yes, we do. Every teacher still learns, but they're a teacher. We have to transfer from that position of a student to a person that is teaching and helping others. And that's what we want to do. We want to live our lives like that. We want to be able to say that God is truly working through us. How is he working through us? It's because we become his legs and his hands to operate in this earthly realm. Now we're talking about a battle. And I want you to understand that there's a difference between a war and a battle. I'm going to say that again. It's a difference between a war and a battle. A battle is a small part in a war. And a war is made up of several different battles. Now the war was won. Jesus won the war when he said it's finished. Okay? The Bible teaches us that we have an enemy. I want you to look at Galatians 6 and 12. Because it says in, uh, excuse me, not Galatians, Ephesians 6 and 12. Because it says in Ephesians, let's go there. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Mm, I know you're familiar with that one. Okay? Let's get over there and get it. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against rulers. Mm, all right? says for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities against rulers against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenlies last week I told you that the heavenlies that's where the activity is that's where that's that's where the angels and the demonic forces are fighting okay that's where it's all going down see what you see on earth is the result of what's happening in the spiritual realm. I told you last week, we had a, a hard wind here in California. I didn't see the wind, but I could see its effects. See, because you don't see into the spiritual realm does not mean that it's not happening. I didn't see the wind, but I seen the effects of the wind. That's why prayer is so important for us right now. That's why we have to come together and pray. We have to come together and stand as believers, as family. We have to be locked together to fight this demonic force because we have been called to do that. Amen? For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Now it talks about Principalities, one. Powers, two. Rulers, three. Spiritual hosts of wickedness, four. Gives us right there four different types of demonic forces that are against us. Four different forces that want to battle with you. Remember I told you the war is won. But see, you can lose your battle if you give up your faith. You can lose your battle if you allow Satan to, 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 to take dominion over your mind. You have to learn that the Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear. But what he has given us is love and a sound mind and power. All right? So we have to use what God has given us, what God has provided for us, what we know that we have. We're not a people that's due to walk in fear. Amen? So, all right, the Bible told us we have an enemy, and that enemy is the devil, and he has a crew. We understand that, but we also understand that we are not victims, but victors. Amen? Turn in your Bibles now to 1 Peter 5, chapter 5, verses 8. And nine. It says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, now notice it says, Your adversary, your adversary, the devil, walks about like 
a roaring lion seeking whom, seeking whom he may devour that means consume or destroy let's re-look at this let's revisit this it says be sober now most of us understand what it means to be sober amen don't act like you didn't have you know a shot or two before to be sober means do not be intoxicated Ho, oh, stop. Intoxicated with what? Intoxicated with fear. Intoxicated with negative thoughts. Intoxicated with things that are not pertaining to what God has told in you. He says, be sober. Be sober. That means to be calm. Be restrained. Be calm. Be restrained. Yes, we have a lot of stuff going on in our world today. We hear news media say this. We hear the president say that. We hear the CDC say this. We, we, get, we get inboxes. We get get Texas. We get in all this. We're being bombarded with all kind of stuff. And it says to be calm. But when you lose the calmness, it's because you start to entertain all of this information. See, the facts are one thing. Alright? But the truth is the word of God. That is a totally different. You must understand that. I'm talking to you now because you know what? I know what you're going through because me and my wife and our family are going through the same thing. All right? But notice what I said. We're going through. We're not remaining there. We're going through. And how are we going through? We're going through with Jesus. It says, be sober. Be vigilant. What does it mean to be vigilant? It means to be watchful. To be watchful, to be observant. Look at things that are happening around you. Be watchful of what God is doing. Be conscious of what God is saying to you. You know, put your ear to his lips. Sometimes shut your mouth and just listen and see what he's saying. Because your adversary. Mm, the word adversary literally means enemy or an opponent. It means an enemy or an opponent. We have an enemy or an opponent. All right? He is our opposition. He is what's trying to stop you. He is what's trying to hinder you. He is what's trying to steal, kill, and destroy from you. You must understand that the Bible has given us proof, God's word, that we are victorious. Amen. The devil walks about like, notice, like a roaring lion. It didn't say he was a roaring lion. It, it says he resembles a roaring lion. See, you could take a stuffed animal that resembles a roaring lion, and it resembles it, but it has no power. The only power that the devil has is the power that you give him. I'm telling you again, the only power or authority that the devil has in your life is what you give him. Because you have more authority and you have more power than he does. But if he can convince you and overwhelm you, then he'll try to take you over. Amen? See, we need to resist the devil. Because it says resist what are you resisting? You're resisting the attack. You're resisting the lies. It says resist the devil. And what else? It says to be steadfast. That means, what does it mean to be steadfast? It means to be firm in one position. You know, when you look at football players and they're on the front line, when they're on that front line, those men are down. They're in position. What are they in position for? They're either in position to block what's coming or they're in position to knock out what's coming. All right? And you have to be positioned the same way. You have to be in a place where you're saying, hey, look, I know it's on. I know it's on, but devil, let me tell you something. I'm ready, I'm, 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 I'm ready and prepared for this. And how are you ready and prepared for this? Because you pray. Because you study the word. Because you're confessing the word. You're making your declarations. You're doing all that you need to do. See, a lot of times when we get turned up and turned out by the enemy, it's because we're not doing what we should be doing. So a lot of times, instead of asking God what's happening, we need to check ourselves. We need to see, where did I leave this door open? Did I leave a window crack? See, it is a time now for us to say that we are more than conquerors. We are lining up with the word. We're just not conquerors. We're more than conquerors. So to be steadfast means to be unwavering. 
It means to be committed. Committed to what? Committed to the faith. Committed to the faith. The Bible says in, John, in, in Romans 12 and 3 that God has given each one of us the measure of faith. The measure of faith. You have the measure of faith to do what's needed to be done in your life. You have the measure of faith that's needed for your life. The question is, will you walk in that faith? Because that's why the Bible says we walk by faith, hello, and not by sight. We're a people of faith. Knowing, knowing that what you're going through, other people are going through. And sometimes we look at what we're going through, and I've been there. We look at what we're going through and we think it's, it's just horrible because it is. But there are others that are going through things even worse than we are for the faith. And we must understand that. So we must remain calm. You know, write these down. I'll take your notes. Write them down. Get your pencil now. I know you got your coffee and your little donuts over there. But get your pencil and your tablet right now. It says, remain calm. That's what I want you to do. Remain calm and restrained mentally. I'm going to say that again. Remain calm and restrained mentally. Because you have a sound and controlled mind. Be watchful to what God is saying and doing. That's number two. Number three, the devil is the adversary. He is the enemy which wants to bring adversity. See, the adversary wants to bring adversity. But the Bible said that God will deliver the righteous out of every adversity. Amen? Now, when he says he will deliver out of every adversity... We want to get out right away. Sometimes you can't get out right away because there's a process that needs to go. So you need to accept the process. You need to go through the process. When you're baking a cake, you just don't put it in the oven for two, three minutes and then take it out. No, there's a process. They tell you 30, 45 minutes, whatever's on the box. So you got to wait. See, you got to wait. Even though you're sitting on the couch with your mouth watering, you want to put the icing on the cake, you can't just do it. You got to wait. There is a process. So sometimes you will be delivered quickly. Sometimes you won't. But in the process, we must ask God, what are we to learn in the midst of that? Amen? What are we to learn in the midst of that? See, this is not a time for us to be playing church. This is a time for us to be the church. Amen? Amen. Be the church. Number four. Seeking, see, the enemy is seeking to destroy your faith. See, he ain't after your car. He ain't after your house. He ain't after your kids. You know he ain't after your kids. Anyway, he ain't after. He, you see, what he's after is your faith. See, because if he can destroy your faith, you'll lose your car. If he can destroy your faith, you'll lose your job. If he can destroy your faith, you won't keep praying for your children. See, he wants to destroy your faith. And that's why Paul said, fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. See, you got to understand that what he's after is your faith. See, if he gets your faith, where are you going to be? You're going to be in a place of doubt. Where are you going to be? In a place of fear. If he gets your faith, but you're not going to let him have your faith. Why? Because the Bible says if you just got a mustard seed, a mustard seed of faith, you can move a mountain. So it's not, it's not about how much faith you got. It's about how you're using the faith that you do have. Amen? See, the war is the Lord's. But the fight and the battle belongs to us. Turn your Bibles to Exodus 14. See, Exodus 14 and verse 13 and 14 is what we're going to be looking at. And it reads this way. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Now look at that. Let's, let's, let's look at that. What is he saying in that context of scripture? What is he saying there? <clears throat> He's saying 
do not be afraid. See, you can't be afraid and have fear and be in faith at the same time. It's not happening. It's not happening. It's like you can't be in an ocean of water and on sand at the same time. You're going to you, you, be wet or you're going to be dry. You got to be one or the other. See, you cannot. So he said to us, just like he said to them, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. He says, stand still. What does that mean? That's like what we looked at over uh, in, 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 in uh, first, first Peter 5 and 8. It said, be steadfast. He says here, be still. What is it be still? That means to remain where you're at. But when you be still, you're not doing anything. All right? See, don't look at it like, oh, just no. To be still means you're not moving in your effort. You're allowing God to move in his. You're trusting him. That's what it means. You're trusting him. You're believing in him. It's like, I'm not, I, I, I'm, I, I'm motionless, but I'm here with you, Lord, and you with me. So I'm going to let you do. Because the Bible, it says right there, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. So he's telling them and he's telling us, hey, hey, if you just be still, just trust me, just know this, that I'm fitting to move, I'm fitting to move, that's what God is saying, I'm fitting to move, but you got to see the salvation. See, that's where faith comes in. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. See, you got two sets of eyes. You got your, you got your human eyes and then you got your spiritual eyes. A lot of times we look with these human eyes and we see all kind of things. We see, we see the situation. We see the circumstances. We see everything that's going on. We see all of this, right? We see all of this. But yet and still, we need to tune in to our spiritual eyes. It was like Elisha and his servant. Servant went out. He looked up. He seen all these soldiers. Oh, he said, oh, we done for. We done for. We done for. We done for. He went back in. He told Elijah. He said, look, man, they got us surrounded. You know, come on now. Let's, you know what? Sometimes we get so spiritual and we really don't think how these men and women thought when they were in a situation. If that were you or that were me, you know, we go back in and tell him, say, man, we, 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 they done caught up with us. We done. We, it's going to be over because the whole mountain is surrounded. But what did Elijah tell? What did Elijah do? He prayed. He said, Lord, open this man's eyes. His eyes had to be open because what? He looked and seen that they were surrounded. So what eyes was he opening? What eyes was he praying to be open? He was praying for the eyes of his faith to be open. And when they were open, he looked up and what did he see? He seen chariots of fire all around. And he said, oh, there's more with us than it is with them. See, you got to understand that when God says over here in Exodus 14, 13 and 14, he says, do not be afraid. Stand still and see and see. What have you really been seeing? Huh? Have you just been seeing the numbers of the death tolls go up? Have you just been seeing how many that's affected? Have you been seeing how this thing is? What have you been seeing? That's what the devil wants you to see. But he's not showing the people that have recovered. The thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people that recovered. Okay? Why? It's because he doesn't want you to see that. See, we got to understand that those that we're praying for, they will recover in the name of Jesus. Those that have went into the hospital, we got to start speaking and believing. They will come out in the name of Jesus. This thing will not continue on much longer. It will have its cutoff date. Amen? Come on, people. Come on, people. We're concerned, but we're not worried and we're not afraid. Amen? Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he, notice the word says he, H-E, he will accomplish for you today. So it tells you, one, do not be afraid. Two, stay positioned. Three, see, see with your eyes of faith. Four, tells you he will accomplish the victory that's needed. See, you need to know this. You need to know that God is fighting for you. Say that with me. God is fighting for me. 
Say it again. God is fighting for me. That's right. Notice he says, continue on reading there in Exodus, for the Egyptians, the Egyptians, see the Egyptians, that represents the world system. That word represents Satan and his crew. So let's put it like this. For the devil, for the situations, for the circumstances, for this coronavirus 19, whom you see today, whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever, forever. The Lord will fight for you. See, God is fighting for us. That's why we have to understand about spiritual warfare. There are things that are happening in the spiritual world that we are not seeing. But we can see the results of it. We're going to see, and I, 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 I speak this out in the name of Jesus. In just a matter of days, we're going to see a turnaround in this situation. We're going to see a turnaround in this situation. We're going to see people giving their testimony of how God has raised them up. Okay? See it with me, people. See the salvation of the Lord. In this text of scripture here at Exodus 14, 13 and 14, that's Exodus 14, 13 and 14, in this text of scripture, what do we gain out of this? We are to stand and be positioned. We are to stand and be positioned. Where are we to be positioned? In the Lord, in the word, in prayer. That's where our position is, in the Lord, in prayer, on our knees, with the word before our eyes, okay? We are to stand and be positioned. Two, we are not to be afraid. We're not to have fear and anxiety. We're not to let the enemy do this. Yeah, yeah, I mean, man, sometimes, you know what, let's be honest. Fear will come. Oh, it will come. But it's what we do when it comes. You may move into fear for a moment, but you got to snap yourself out of it. You got to snap yourself out of it. You got to snap yourself out of it. You got to say, oh, hell no, I ain't going to accept this. You got to say it. You got to say it. You got to mean it. You got to decree it. You got to speak it out your mouth. You got to say, no, no, the word is not in agreement with this. And neither am I. My God, my God, my God, my God is bigger than this. Uh-uh. You got to open your mouth and speak it. That's what Jesus did when he was dealing with the devil, wasn't it? Huh? That's what it says over the book of Job. You decree a thing and it shall come to pass. Huh? That's what it says in the book of Proverbs. Life and death is in the what? Power of the tongue. So you're going to have to speak to yourself sometime. And what does that mean? That means that when you're going through a challenging moment, a moment you don't understand, a moment where you're being challenged to walk in fear, a moment when you're being challenged to walk in doubt, that you are going to walk in in faith. How are you going to do that? You're going to remind yourself, one, of who your God is. Two, of what the Word says. Three, of who you are in your God. Amen? All right. Amen. So we're not going to be afraid. We're going to stand still. What does that mean, stand still? Remain in worship. Remain in worship. The Bible says that God inhabits the praise of his people. You know, a lot of times, you know, we're calling for God to come here, come here. God ain't never left you because if you're calling for him to come here, that means he don't went somewhere. So that means he said he'll never leave you nor forsake you is not the truth. So stop, you know, he's with you. He's with you. He's in you. You and God are one. When Jesus died, you understand me, you, on the cross, literally, you died with him. When, when he was rose up, you rose up with him. Amen? I mean, that's what the Bible teaches us. That's what we say. When he went into the heavenlies and he sat at the right hand of the Father, hey, hey, when he sat down at the right hand of the Father, you and I sat down there too because we were in him. That's shouting ground there, people. That's you right now. You should be up running through your house shouting. Yes, I'm sitting on the throne next to the Father in Jesus. Amen. Yes, right. Y'all don't need to get happy. You at home. You can, yeah, yeah, you can get happy now. It says, see, number, number four is see the deliverance of the Lord with your eyes of faith. 
You shall hold your peace. What does that mean? Hold your peace. Shut your mouth to negative comments. Shut your mouth to negative comments. Don't allow the people, situations, to have you say anything that's contrary to what God has said. What do you mean, past? Sometimes you just, and look, we understand we get facts. Okay? Look, example. I'm coughing. I'm just coughing. I'm not refuting the fact that I may have a cold. I'm not refuting that. That's the fact. But the truth of the matter is, the Bible says that I've been healed by his stripes. So if I'm going to confess something, I need to confess what? The truth. The truth. That's why the Bible says that Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Okay? So if you're going to confess something and you're going to say something, say the truth on what God says. Be in agreement. Be in agreement with what the word of God says. If two touch and agree is asking anything here on this earth, it shall be done for them. All right? Get in agreement with what God is saying about you and for you. Amen? Amen. See, when I said earlier that Jesus won the battle, turn in your Bible to Colossians 2.15. Go ahead, turn over there to Colossians. That's in the New Testament. Colossians 2.15. And you should, you know, these scriptures that I'm giving you, you should be highlighting these scriptures. You should have, like I said, your note in your, 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 your note tablet and your pen. Amen? All right. All right. 2.15. Colossians 2.15 It says, having disarmed principalities and powers he, which is speaking about Jesus he, Jesus made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Now I'm going to read right here I'm going to read the message Bible alright it's the same scripture Colossians 2.15, now listen to this he, Jesus, stripped all the spiritual tyrants in the universe of their sham, fake, and bogus authority at the cross and marched them naked through the streets. What is this scripture telling us? That when Jesus went into, uh, the, the, spent the three days, you know, he went into hell and preached the gospel to those that were being held in a separate part of hell. And he led, the Bible says he led captives free. Okay? Ephesians 4, 11. All right, he said he led captives free. Okay, so what is it saying to us that Jesus went down there and he just made an open show of how he kicked the devil's butt? And you know what? You can do the same thing. You walk in your faith, you hold on to the word of God, and you know, you know that you know who you are in Christ Jesus. You are more than a conqueror, you're not a victim, you are a victor. You're not a victim. You are a victor. Oh, no. We're not living in victim mentality anymore. We are victors. Amen? Amen. Jesus defeated the enemy. He won the war. But we still got a battle that we're fighting. That's what I want to get you to see. We still got a battle that we're fighting. But we, we have our tools. We know, we know where our tools is. Our tools are right here. They're right here. God has given them to us. God has given them to us. Amen? The only authority the devil has over you is the authority that you let him have. That's the only authority he has is what you let him have. So how do we overcome the enemy? Turn to 1 John 5 and 4. Okay? Because that was a good question. I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> how do we overcome the enemy? 1 John 5, 4 tells us how. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Question one, are you born again? Have you confessed Jesus as your Lord? Yes, you have. So that means you're born again. All right? Because you're born again, it says, whoever is born of God overcomes the world. So whoever is born of God has the ability to overcome the world. But again, 
It is up to you to use what you have. Amen? Say it with me. I'm going to use what I got. I'm going to use what I got. Say it loud. Say it so your neighbors can hear. I'm going to use what I got. And what do you have? You have authority. You have authority. God has given you that. In Jesus name. It says for whatever is born of God. Overcomes the world. And this is the victory. That overcomes the world. Our faith. Our faith. That's what overcomes the world. So we need to one. Stay on point. That's the word. Stay on point. Stay on point. Stay on point. Read something every day. Read something. As we're going through what we're going through and face with now, oh, you should be reading Psalms 91. You should be reading Psalms 27. You should be reading Psalms 23. You should be reading these things that show who God is. He that dwelleth in the secret place. See, secret, see, see, some people tell you, well, if it's secret, how you know where it is? Well, see, if I tell my wife a secret, you may not know where it is, but she is. She does. See, God told us where the secret place is. It's in his presence. It's with him. He that dwelleth in the secret place. He that dwelleth with God. He that remains in the place with God. He that dwelleth. He that remains. He that stays. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. He said that person, that person who dwells that person who stays that person who remains in the presence of God he says he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall 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 not might not could says he will definitely shall definitely shall shall what he shall be protected he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide up under the shadows of the almighty you know what you're going to say? It's, you're going to say exactly what it says in that scripture. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. People today, I'm telling you, God is your refuge. He is your strong tower. The Bible says we look toward the hills, heaven, where cometh our help. I understand that we're trying to you know, wear face masks, which is, you know, doing the things that are reasonable, you know, that we can do. Wearing our face masks, washing our hands, staying, you know, physically distanced, but not socially distanced. We're staying physically distanced, but not socially distanced because we're socializing right now, even though we're doing it over the media. Okay? But we're doing what we can. As long as we do what we can and we trust God to do what he can, we're going to come out, like I said, victors and not victims. Amen? Victors and not victims. Okay? Next thing is to believe in the promises of God. The Bible says over in the book of 1 Corinthians, first chapter, it says all the promises of God are yea and amen. What does that mean to us? What is, I mean, really, literally, what does that mean to us? See, a promise is only as good as the person that's making the promise. If you got a flaky person in your life and you know that person don't never come through and that person don't never do what they're supposed to say, when they make you a promise, you want to believe in the promise, but you don't really believe it because of their past behavior. Well, let's take God's behavior. God has always did what he said. He has never let us down. He is a faithful God. So if he is faithful, let's, let's believe his promises on his character. Amen? On his character. God has shown that he is a God that can be believed on. He is a God that can be trusted. So when the Bible says all the promises are yea, yes and amen, so be it. They are. The problem is we don't believe on a lot of the promises. We don't believe on the promises. Oh, why would God want to do that? Because God loves you. That's why he wants to do that. Because you are his child. That's why he wants to do that. You are a family member. That's why he wants to do that. Oh, you don't know. I've been bad. So many people in the Bible were bad. But God still used them. God still loved them. And you know what? God loves you. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith, people. That's what we do. I pray that this message has been a blessing to you. But before we go, as I said earlier, I wanted for us to do communion together. I asked you, you know, to get your items together, you know, so you could do communion with us. And I always remember that, you know what, you may not have grape juice and, 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 and unleavened, you know, cracker. But do you have some water and a piece of bread? Do you have some water and a piece of bread? Because what we do when we do communion, it symbolizes what Jesus has done for us. 
And I want you to understand, don't get so caught up in having what you consider the right elements. You know, have the right attitude about what we're doing. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to step right down here and I'm going to grab my items. And I hope that you're grabbing yours. And I'm going to the first, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And that's where Paul, I know most of you Bible scholars and those that in your words, you know where I'm going. So you should be on your way there. And it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, For I received from the Lord that which I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. Please, take it. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take Eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do, as often as you drink it, put, it puts me in remembrance. Please partake. Again, I want to thank you for joining us. I am Pastor Miller, the Great I Am Faith Center. As I said in the beginning of this broadcast, it was a blessing to have you join us. I am blessed to have you, and I pray that you have received some type of benefit from the word that has gone forth. I want to thank you also for your giving, but I want you to also know that during these challenging times, you can continue to give your tithes and offerings by either visiting our website or you can download our app. If you have our app, you can download it. Go to Google Play or Apple Store and put in, you know, the Great I Am Faith Center or IAMFC, you know, whatever you want to do. But if the Lord leads you to sow into our ministry, we would greatly appreciate it. We would greatly appreciate it. Love you with all of my heart. This is Pastor Mel from the Great I Am Faith Center signing out. And remember, Jesus is Lord. Remember, you are his child. God bless you.